So recently I um, posted a little video on how to update your profile photo. Cool, right? Because the people respond to faces and it's easy to sort of um, associate or, or sort of get to know someone when you can actually see their face. But what about all the other information? What about new starters are coming into the organization and want to find out who does what or if I'm speaking with a particular person and I need to speak with their manager or whoever else is in the team because that person's not available. How do we do that? Now, for a lot of organizations, what they do is they spend their time putting together a phone list that they distribute uh, as a Word document or Excel spreadsheet, and they send it around by email, and it's pretty much out of date the moment they hit send. And then we're going to go and try to find it, and it's going to be saved somewhere, and it's like, yeah, there's a better way of doing that. And it's embedded already in Outlook, Teams, and anywhere you see someone's name or profile, inside of the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. It doesn't take a lot of effort to get this up to date, but you have to commit to doing it. So what does it look like and why do we want to do this? So let's go and have a look here. So I've got my um, landing page here, my new tab inside of Microsoft Edge. The reason I love this is I can get access to a lot of information, right? I can already see that my team have been pretty good about getting up their user profiles, which is really good to see because I relate better to people when I can see their face. But how do I update all of the contact information? Or what's my organizational structure for the organization, right? How do we get this information? Now, again, this is readily available inside an edge on the landing page, but where else does it get exposed? Let's say I'm over in Teams and I'm chatting with um, Patty here. So I'm having a conversation. I want to learn more about her. If I just click on a photo, pops her details. If you hover over in line with a chat, you're just going to get the short one. But when you're actually chatting directly, you can click on their photo, their profile picture, and it's going to open up all the details. I can see um, what time it is in uh, her particular time zone. Uh, she's over in the US, right? So we can actually see that she's um, 18 hours ahead of Patty. So that's why she's currently offline. It's also going to tell me when she's free um, and get me a little bit of understanding of when I might be able to contact Patty next. Also see who reports to her um, and whether or not uh, she's, uh, you know, details inside of LinkedIn, right? Because Microsoft owns LinkedIn and it's all connected. But I can also dig in um, and see more contact details, what department she's in, what um, uh, company, her job title, uh, phone numbers, location, and a bunch of other things. The other thing I can do is I can send you know, chat, um, video calls, or normal calls, right? I can also see her profile, which is currently offline as status. But let's go and have a look at organization. And this is where it starts to become really cool. Because we've set up the manager field in everyone's profile, we can then dynamically build up an organizational structure, right? And this is what Microsoft 365 does, and it's been doing it for a very long time, yet no one takes advantage of it. We get instead spend time manually putting this stuff together. Stop wasting your time. Just collect all the information, give it to your tech team, go and update this data and let me show you how easy it is to do that i'm over here in um, the microsoft 365 admin center now you do need admin rights at least of a user admin or user manager level of role to be able to access this but otherwise reach out to your tech team to do it so what can you do so i'm going to pick on patty here for a moment um and i can see that you know, I can change all these details, right? This is all the technical stuff that we can do. We can change licenses, mail, OneDrive, and all that sort of stuff. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is updating things like the manager. Now, that is a special case. He's the CEO of the company, the president of the company, top of the tree. He doesn't get a manager, right? Because that's where everyone goes to report to. But we can quickly add on a new manager simply by clicking here and typing in the new person. Right? And then it will dynamically build the organization structure based on who people report to. The other one is, is the contact detail. They're down here um, where we can actually go and update these details. You can see we've got a phone number here as well as the display name. 
Now, the display name is important because that's what will appear when you email someone. That display name is what goes on for emails. Pro tip, if you have shared mailboxes, don't just call it accounts or info. That's what people see. Accounts and info, who? Use a branding opportunity to stick the name of your business. Put a slash or an at or some other symbol and then your company name. Then we get accounts at your company. Accounts slash your company, right? So we know who is responding without having to actually go and check the email address. But take advantage of that. Make sure you get the display name and mailboxes. So I'm just going to click here on uh, manage contact information. And what do we get? We get a big screen here with a whole bunch of data, right? First name, last name, display name. This gives you the ability of having the official name in the first name, but display name is preferred name. Cool. Um, what their job title is, what department they're in, um, what office location they're based in, their phone, fax. Anyone use faxes anymore? Put in the comments if you do, but I don't think anyone really does anymore. Um, mobile phones uh, or cell phones if you're in the US. Uh, street addresses, city, state, yeah, etc. You get the you get the gist. You have this information already. Make it available to your team at their fingertips wherever they're working. Anywhere in SharePoint, Teams, Outlook, all this information is available and I can find it easily to be able to get in contact. So we go back to Patty. So we're back here with Patty and we're having a, a conversation with her and we're going, well, Patty's not available, but I need someone else to take advantage or to, to do something. For um, I know Miriam um, works quite regularly with Patty. What does she work in? She works in retail, right? And that's the problem I've got. I need to talk to someone in retail. I know Miriam's there, but she's not available to take my call. But I can go and talk to Adele, who's the uh, retail manager. I already understand the process and how the organization's structured. Who's available to take a particular call? Really, really important and really, really useful, especially for your new starting. So you've got your, your profile photo. Great. Update all the other information. Ditch the old um, phone lists. They're useless anyway, because they're out of date at the moment you send it. And take advantage of Microsoft 365 and its centralized directory to make all the information about you and your team available to everyone in the organization. Oh, and pro tip on phone numbers. Put in the entire country code, area code, etc. Why? So when your team is traveling, they can just find the phone number and dial up from anywhere in the world that they have a phone service. All right. Hope you found that useful. Bye for now. Don't forget, your profile's up.